Hello everybody. Welcome to the today's topic on conversion of isometric view to orthographic view. Myself Sendhil, Professor of Home Engineering. So let us see about the general classification of uh, the projections. Usually they call as parallel projection, perspective projections. In parallel projections, there are two categories. One is orthographic, another one is oblique. So in orthographic, you'll be there is a usual uh, view which will be going in this like this multi views, and another is iso axonometric views. In axonometric views, you'll be having different categories like the isometric, diametric, and trimetric. Okay, so the common uh, classifications or types that are used are orthographic and the isometric views. So orthographic means uh, it's like the multi view options. So what is isometric projection? It is a method which is usually used for representing a 3D object like this. A cube or a cylinder, a sphere, a pyramid, a cone. Okay. So usually the angles, the coordinates appears to be at 120 degree to each other. Okay. So usually when you are talking about orthographic projections, it means their lens will be foreshortened. That is by 0.82 times. Okay. So if it is a view, there won't be any foreshortening. They will be having the same true length. Okay. That is what isometric projection is. Then what is orthographic projection of view? It is nothing but a method of projection in which your object is depicted using parallel lines. So it outlines to a plane like this. So this plane may be a vertical plane, horizontal plane, or a auxiliary plane, or combination of these. So usually we'll be going for two common planes, that is vertical plane and horizontal plane, wherein we'll be getting the front view and top view. Sometimes in order to get the sectional view, we'll be going for auxiliary planes. If at all to get the side view, we will be going for the side planes, which may be a right side or left side. So the common things already we knew that is there are uh, two common uh, orthographic projections which are used that are first angle projection and third angle projection. Okay, fine. Now let us see what is the differences between these two orthographic and isometric. Usually the orthographic projection is used for making projects. That is, it is usually used for production drawing, okay? wherein you need the details of all the components inside a particular assembly, you will be going for orthographic projections. In order to have a better understanding, you will be choosing isometric projections so that it gives you the 3D view so that you can get a better understanding. Whereas if you want to go into a production process wherein detailing is very very important, you will be choosing orthographic projections. So usually orthographic drawings are uh, of two dimensional views, whereas an isometric drawing will be depicting a 3D image as like it appears to a person in his perspective. Alright, so with these uh, outlines, the problem number one. So here we'll be handling a problem wherein we'll be converting an isometric view into an orthographic view. So this is a one exercise wherein you are having an isometric view of this particular object. Okay. So all these dimensions here are in mm and the direction in which the arrow points you should take it as a front view. If at all the arrow is given, you can take it or else if the arrow is not there, you can choose your front view based upon which the top views and side views will be drawn. Okay. So whereas here your arrow is given so that we will be taking this as the front view. Okay. So let us go to the problem and uh, let us see how it is going to be solved. So this is the given question, the isometric view of this object. So in order to have a clear understanding, let me name the planes or surfaces that are available in this object. So let us let me name this surface as A and this surface as B, this as C, D, this one as E, 
this one as F and the small one as G and this area as H. So I have named the all the surfaces. This is just for understanding. Okay. So after naming the surfaces, let us go and uh, let us see how it is getting solved. So first draw a reference line. That is your X Y line. So let us first go with the front view. So when you're looking at the front view, you can see the surfaces A, C and G will be visible. Yes so or no? When you're looking from this side, so these surfaces will be visible. So I have to draw these surfaces onto the front view now. So let us draw the surface A first. So surface A is 55 mm long and 10 mm height. Okay, so this is a surface A which is 55 mm long and 10 mm height. So this is the dimension of your surface A. Then your surface C is 25 mm from this A surface and 25 mm in length. So height is 25 and length is 25 like this. And similarly, your G is from this C, it is extending up to the final length of this A. And the total height of this G will be measured from this H, that is 15 mm. So I have drawn this 15 mm and I have got this G portion. So this pertains to your front view. So look at here, when you look at the front view, you are looking at these surfaces A, C and G. So I have to draw this surfaces onto the front view. Okay. So after completing a front view, project all these available edges onto the next view. That is your top view. Okay. Like this. Project all the available edges. Okay. So this is the area where you have to draw the top view. So look at here. When looking from the top view, that is from the above. So you can easily see, so the surfaces B, D and E will be visible, yes or no, so looking from the top. So your B surface, D surface and E surface, okay. So let us start with the B surface. So for the B surface, I have already got the length. So this is the length. So what could be the width here? This will be 50 mm. So with length as 55 and your width as 50, draw the B surface okay so within this B surface we will be getting the D and E somewhere here so what is the dimensioning of D so from this point from this this point is this one so from this point your B surface is 25 mm in length and the entire so this edge I have to draw this is the edge which I will be getting here and this edge I will be automatically taking it through the projected line here Okay. So let us first mark the 25 mm length and then get the surface of your D here. Alright. So this is the surface of D. So this is 25 mm from this point. Okay. Whereas this edge, this one, I have already automatically took it from the projected line. So these projection lines will be able, will be helping you to pick the lines automatically. Okay. The boundaries will be easily captured through your projection lines. Okay. Then we are what about E here? So for this E, it from this point. So this is the point which pertains to here. Okay. From this point, that is 5 mm in distance. That is what given here. Okay, 5 mm in distance. So that will be marking you this edge, the edge of your E here. So mark this point that is 5 mm and get the surface E. So we have obtained the surfaces which are visible in the top view. Okay, your B, D and E. So now we have to go for the right side view that is this side view. Okay, so when you are looking from here, your right side, this is the way in which you will be looking at the right side. So looking at the right side here, the surfaces which will be visible will be your F and H. Okay, F and H will be the one which will be visible when you are looking from the right side from here. Okay, So in order to get this right side view, what I will be doing is, I will be taking all these edges 
converting diverting it to the right side plane okay so look at here i am doing so now to start with this first draw a line from this point which is at 90 degrees okay 90 degrees so it will be 45 degree right so this whole length will be 40 90 and at this junction draw a line which is 45 degree in angle all right so this 45 degree now project all these available edges on the top view onto this 45 degree line okay then project of from this divert all your convert all your these available edges onto this right side plane okay similarly project all these points available points here on your front view to this side plane and project all your extend all your uh, lines from your top view towards the side plane okay now i have got all the available edges projection of these edges so within these edges i have to plot my f and h so look at here so f here is 50 mm in length so this 50 mm i can take it from here so look at here this is the edge which carries the 50 mm from here to here so this edge will be 50 mm and from here your yeah, f is 50 mm height so 50 mm length is here so this will be 50 mm so your first line this edge will be marked here okay and till what edge it is uh, moving this is moving till this edge of e yes or no still it can completes the eh so eh is here this is eh and look at here and it comes till here so this will be your and again it is getting down so that it hits the g surface so like this and from this g surface it extends till your a surface like this okay and from here it will be again moving downwards and complete the surface like this okay so this will be your surface here and the head surface will be above this on this edge yes sir no? so look at here so from here to here it will be this point and this point okay and this will be a surface h so hence we have completed the side view of your orthographic projections so this is how you will be getting your or converting your isometric projection to an orthographic projection okay now name the views this will be a front view this will be a top view and this will be your right side view and all the dimensions here will be in mm okay so this is the way in which you are converting your isometric views into the orthographic views i have used these uh, surface named surfaces only for understanding purpose while you are solving the problem there is no need to write these surface names okay so you can uh, draw the surfaces alone no need to draw the please don't draw the or write the surfaces names it is only for understanding purpose okay thank you